Hi and welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to explore the sum product and I have several examples here of when and how to use the sum product. And I'll be starting with a basic example and then some examples are with combination with other formulas. So, let's start right now with example number one. So, basically, we wanted to have total sales here and that's basically uh, like this. Unit price times the quantity sold and have that copy and then paste it. And then you get the sum of these results, and that's it. That's the grand total sales. But we can simplify it with the sum product. And uh, I'm going to write the pro formula here, the sum product. And then it requires an array. The first array will be the unit price multiplied comma with the quantity sold. And then close parenthesis, and that's it. That's the same result, right? But to remove these steps here. So that's the very basic function of the sum product. It has, uh, it multiplies each unit price quantity sold in each line item, and then at the end, it gets the sum of it, sum of the result. So that's the sum product. Now let's move on with example number two, which is uh, a sum product used in getting the weighted average equivalent of anything, basically anything. And in this example, I wanted to have the weighted average of metal grade in percentage. As you can see here, I only use an average here, basic average, and I wanted to replace it with the weighted average, considering the impact of tonnage here. And let's do this. Some product, and then the array will be the tonnage. Basically, uh, it's it's like the first example, but the array here is like moving horizontally uh, compared with the first one, which is moving vertically. And then the second array will be the metal grade here. And then close the sum product, divide it with the total tonnage to get the weighted average because that's the formula of the weighted average, right? And then press enter and that's it. That's the weighted average metal grade in this example. And it has a mini minimal difference with just the basic average. So it's better to have a weighted average. And that's uh, possible uh, very easily with the sum product formula. And now let's move on with... Example number three, and in this case, we're going to have or we're going to compute the number of unique values in this list. As you can see, I have a list here of 30 product items, and uh, notice that the product here, all of the products here, products here are being repeated. So I wanted to get the unique values in here, count the unique values, and in this case, we're going to combine it with count if formula. So first, Let's construct the formula of the count if. Let's check it. And it requires a range. The range will be the, the list of items, comma, the criteria. The criteria will also be all of it. So here, criteria will be, you wanted to count each item with this criteria, all of this line items. So let's check it. It's not the final answer yet. So I press F2 and then I highlight this formula. <coughs> Let's see what happened here. I press F9 and the result is here. As you can see, it has a curly bracket, which means an array. And it, inclu it, it includes 3, 3, 5, and so on. That means product 1 here is repeated 3 times. Product 7 is the same 3 times. And product 9, 5 times, and so on. So that's what I need in this first step, right? And it's an array. That's important. Then escape. Then I'm going to put... A divisor here which is one one divide this county formula and that's not yet the answer right then i'm going to to investigate the or evaluate the formula by, by pressing f9 and the value now is like a percentage presented in decimal of course and that's 0 0.33 0 0.33 point two so that means that each of these uh, items is now being counted as a percentage so that later on all of this will have a value of one when you get the sum of it like for example product number one the first item is repeated three times now the share of this uh first line item is 0 0.33 when you combine the 3.33 on its own that is equivalent to one and that will be repeated over all of the items so let's put the sum product now Control Z, then some product because some product can handle an array and it has a sum 
formula here, which will have a value later on of the unique values. So that means in this list, it has 10 unique values. Let's check it. I'm going to copy it and then paste it. And I'm going to, to remove the items in here. Data, remove duplicates, and then OK. As you can see here, it has 10 items in here. Product 1 to 10. And that's the answer here. That's now correct. So that's it. Let's move on with the fourth example here. Some product that is being used with the multiple criteria. I've already shown this example in my previous video, which is the video combining or together with the index and match. But I'm going to show you that uh, it is also being used here. So I'm going to write the pro formula here. Basically, the total sales, of course, is the unit price, comma, the quantity sold. That's it, comma. But in here, we're going to put the criteria. There's two criteria. There are two criteria here, the customer name and the product, which is customer two and product three. So uh, the first criteria will be customer. And I'm going to use the array of the customer here, equal customer two. Then close the parentheses and put an asterisk to combine the next criteria, which is the product. Open parentheses, don't forget that if you're looking for the criteria. And then highlight all of the product items here equal to product 3. Close parentheses, another close for the sum product, and that's it. That's the answer. Why? Because here, this is customer 2, this is product 3, and this is the result, right? So, I'm going to multiply that, unit price, quantity sold, get the sum of these two, and that's equal to this one. That's it. So, um, let's move on with the final example of my sum product here. And in here, I'm going to combine it with subtotal, offset, and row formulas. And basically, I wanted to get the sum product of this. Let's check it here. In this... Um, sample cell here some product basically this is what we need total sales right just like the first example and that's it but the problem here because as you can see i formatted this table in format as table and then it has some filter on it when you filter for example you wanted to look for a specific product it doesn't work in here we're going to work out uh a formula using some product and other formulas here and at the same time this filter function is also working so control Z what I need here is to combine it of course with subtotal offset and row so let's check first the subtotal so I'm writing subtotal here and then it requires a function number and I'm gonna use 9 here which is equivalent to a sum and then comma a reference here is actually anything. It's either unit price or quantity sold. We're going to use a quantity sold here. Close it. That's it. Um, there's an answer. The answer will be the, the sum of all of these items. When you sum it all, it is equal to this uh, portion. And then, let's check it. When we, when we use the filter here, it works. It's the sum of it. Control Z. When you hide it manually, hide, it doesn't work. Control Z. So I'm going to replace this 9 with 109, which is also a function number equivalent to a sum, but it can handle a hidden cells. So enter and then just try it. It now works. So that's it for the subtotal. But the problem with the subtotal, it can only handle uh, this part, quantity sold. What we need here is to multiply this two, right? So we're going to replace this part with the offset function and a row function. But before that, I'm going to use name manager here. For the whole table, I'm, I'm using sample table as the name. And that's it. And then the unit price, including the heading as the unit price and that's it now I'm going to replace this part with offset offset and then it requires a reference here my reference is basically the reference is anything in this cell it could be a1 or anything but for me 
my, my reference will be the first cell in my table. Then comma, it requires now a rows. Now the rows, I'm going to use the name manager, which is a sample table, to include all of the table. Because I wanted to have uh, the index of this uh, table. But in here, I'm going to put a uh, formula row. So row index of this sample table. And then less the row of my reference. My reference, which is the first cell in my table. Later on, I will explain it after I finish the offset. And then comma. That's the row. And now it requires a column. The column will be equal to 3. Why 3? Because my reference cell is in here which is equivalent to zero, and this is one, two, and three, because I wanted to get quantity sold here. So that's it. That's why it's three. Now it requires a height and a width. A height and a width have a minimum number of one. It cannot be zero. And that means a height and width of one is equivalent to one cell, because my reference here is only one cell, so the, the, the height and width is one. But if you have, for example, for example, sorry for that. For example, you have a reference of two cells. The height will be two. You have this row, right? The height will be two and the width is one. But if you have an example of four cells like this, the height is two and the width is two. It is dependent on the cell. But uh, in my example, it's one cell, so it's one and one. But don't worry, I, I'm not going to put one and one here. I just leave it blank. It's okay. And that's it. So it's not the answer yet. Let's just check what happened in every formula here. So here, I'm pressing F9. It returns a 6. Why 6? Because this is equivalent to the index of your spreadsheet row index here. Escape, F2. Let's check the second row here. The first row in the, after the offset. F9, it returns an array of row index. And that's what I need here. Um, each row index, uh, each, the array of each row index, which is equivalent to this part, right? 6 to 16, where your, your table is located. So escape F2, and then highlight this, this part, row sample table minus row B6, F9. That's, that's uh, the answer for that. It is an array with a curly bracket, and it has 0, 1, 2, 3, because... Uh, the formula we use is that every row index is being the uh, minus the row the row six here. That's why the first um, cell in my reference table is equivalent to one, equivalent to zero. That's what I need because this is a handing, and this uh, in this part it's, it becomes one instead of seven, two instead of eight, and so on. And that's it. So uh, when you hide a cell here. It will be the same, 1, 2, 3, and 4. This, the counting will be the same. So escape F2, let's check the offset. The offset here will be this formula, F9. And that's what we need here, exactly what we need. The quantity sold, and then the figures here listed in this column in its sequence. That's what we need, right? That's the first array in, this, in our sum product, right? So I'm going to escape it. That's it. We're, we're now putting the sum product na in this uh, formula. This is your first array, the formula that we did, comma, the unit price. Because I used a name manager a while ago. And as you can see, it, the unit price highlighted this part. That means this is the second array being multiplied by this first one. And that's it. As you can see, it has the same value. When you uh, sort it, for example, product one only, it works. This one multiplied by this one. Control Z, when you hide something in this uh, table, it also works. Control Z, when you add on your table, because this is formatted as table, for example, uh, this one, customer 2, 30, and 30. That becomes updated when you filter it. That's become updated. Control Z when you delete it. Again, this updated when you hide it again. Hide. That's working. Control Z. And that's it.
that's uh, the sum product. I've shown you several ways to do it, five ways to do sum product with combination with other uh, useful formulas. And it's done. I'm finished here. If you're liking my videos, you can subscribe in my channel. And see you next time and thanks.